everyone how's it going so um this video was uh for um r g d e one eight eight and uh he uploaded a video a few days ago um because he has a old mall steam engine and had some some questions on and just wanted you know people to with you know to know how to put answers down in the the comments section and uh well I thought with all the stuff I know and <laughs> you know instead of just writing a long comment with stuff because you know um and then like with links and it would just make more sense to uh to make a video showing some of it answering some of the questions and then putting uh the links in the the bucket below so um your first question was uh, about fuel so you know of course you're wondering about this kind and uh, another viewer um answered that in the comments with a link to amazon but um so it's esbit solid fuel and as you can see on the on there it's for um you can use it for grills or campfires and so that is what it's made for and they also supply it to uh, the main model steam engine uh, company so um and then that's what they come with and then this is kind of what it looks like and uh so if i can focus that But I know you know, it says that, but like I said, it looks like a little sugar cube. Um, so you can buy them online because they from Amazon, but you can also buy them from uh, model steam engine sites such as uh, Mini Steam here in the U.S. or Forest Classics from the U.K. and uh, some others, and also from the company's website. And um, you can also of course, buy it from uh, camp supply stores like REI, Dix, or whoever, and um, you know because they sell for the camp stoves, and that's a little bigger than this, but you could just break it up and it works just fine. Also, they um, I think they sell it at a uh, grocery stores this time of year as a grill starter, and you know instead of it saying you know Esbit, it'll say like Weber, or Kingsford, or something like that. And uh, there are a lot of types of fuel options and um, personal preference. I'm not fond of Esbit. Um, a lot of people like rowing them on because they think, oh, that's what you rowing on because that's what they come with. Um, and, you know, people have their reasons and, you know, that's fine. Everyone, and, uh, sorry. But what I prefer is uh, Sterno and hand sanitizer not together um but they're two great fuels and of course you can find them in any grocery store at all types times of the year and so you know um thing i like about you know stern you know they're they're cheap they burn good and so i don't really think i should explain it but i will say um you know, if you're using sternal, it is kind of a pain in the ass to scoop it out with a little spoon into your burn tray. So, I came up with this little uh, doohickey. And, you know, it's as complex as it looks. It's a, it's a plastic fork, and I just filled in the tines with hot glue. And so you can just scoop it up and put it in your burner tray. And, uh, so this burner tray doesn't go to my, this engine. Um, so this burner tray is from one of my Walescos, like yours. Your engine is a 1950s uh, Walesco D4. And I can tell it's probably mid to late 50s by the uh, safety valve and the burner tray. And so you can see this one's lined with tin foil. And uh, there's a couple reasons for that. One, uh, just makes it a little neater after you run your fuel in it, especially if you're running on sterno, but especially if you're running it on hand sanitizer because, you know, it's semi-liquid, semi so you don't want it dripping out. Otherwise, it'll 
you know, meld on anything, and, uh, yeah, not good if you set something on fire. So, you know, that covers, uh, fuel. And, uh, like I said, your engine's a Walesco D4, and so I don't have a Walesco D4. Um, I got a couple Walescos, but not D4, uh, any stationaries. So the closest engine I have to yours is this little Jensen 76. And so it's just, you know, little oscillator, also called a wobbler type engine. So, and there's that burner. And uh, you were wondering also about the belts, uh, where to get the belts. So, I know these aren't made exclusively for uh, toy and model steam engines. I'm, I know I've seen them in like bracelets or necklaces that I've, you know, like actually something that my mother had. I'm like, hey, that's uh, the same type of belt and it was all stretched out, but there's still some good material in it. Um, I know it's a spring belt. I don't know if there's another term for that where you could buy it in like a nice big spool. But uh, they, they sell them in pre-cut lengths at um, steam engine dealers on eBay or, uh, like I said, Mini Steam Force Classics. And Mini Steam also sells them on Amazon. So if there's anyone who actually knows what kind of belt this is, anyone else who might be watching it, uh, let me know. And as you can see, this end is tapered. I don't know if you can tell. Um... And then, so then it's tapered, so then just screws into the other end. And then here are two Walesco belts. Um, like I said, I bought these off on Amazon from Mini Steam, and it was maybe $10, $15 for a pack of five. And so, you know, you put it on there. And uh, another thing you said was about, you know, what did you really use them for in the hobby? Um, well, I... My understanding of your question is, uh, I don't know if I understand this right. Um, well, you know, you, you can just run them. I mean, I know I like just running them and watching the, the parts move and the monitoring them and blowing the whistle. Um, but like I said, your, your engine doesn't have a whistle. But there are just some things I like about it. But, uh, yeah, you can get little accessories and things to run off of them um, like a real steam engine would have run back back in the day and so the types of tools and accessories you can get are I think from like parts for a machine shop or a carnival setup like you said a ferris wheel so uh, here are some of my accessories just this guy out of the way so this is a uh, I forget the monitor I think um, it's a Walesco M16 machine shop and so you got your line shaft and pulleys and you got a drill press a grinder and a little table saw and of course it's not all that powerful so if you get one you can just make uh, you know, these little paper boards of tissue paper to cut it on and so you can also buy these as individual on individual basis so another uh, couple accessories I have are uh move that out of the way the cement mixer from about the 1960s and then this punch press from uh the 70s and so like i say you can hook a belt up to here and a little punch press or you can you know, pretend like you're mixing uh, cement and uh we'll put a link in the bucket below about oh a to a german hobbyist um youtube channel and most of his engines are walesco and he even has a video where he made cement in his little mixer i wouldn't necessarily recommend that but um probably because mine's you know a vintage one but i have um i do take my engines to and uh, display them sometimes especially if a uh, history class or whatever talking about it machines and the industrial revolution i will put some baking some water in there so it looks like it's making cement um 
And a couple other accessories I have are, uh, these are obviously homemade. So, um, this, these are all based off of antique uh, German accessories. So, um, this windmill I made is copied from a uh, Fleischmann uh, from like about the 20s or 30s. And I don't really think I need to explain what it's made out of, you know, just some tins and of course I got the roof taped off. Because it, it just came off when I set it up. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the um, machine shop I have, I was missing a couple of the pulleys. Well, they're here for my windmill. And uh, this model is uh, based off of a doll uh, dredger, also from the 20s or 30s. And so you'd fill it with water or sand and run to the engine and it would just scoop up. And then this is just a little mock-up I made, and it's a copy of a um, 1920s um, Marklin hammer, blacksmith hammer, forge hammer, and just haven't got around to making one out of metal. And uh, so that basically answers your your general questions. Um, also. You know, there's also engine maintenance and also ways to run the engine because um, they are little finicky things and they do have some special needs and maintenance to keep them running properly. So, um, you know, like water. You're probably thinking, well, water can just get out of the tap. So you'd want to run your engines on, your engine on distilled water. And the reason is, is that you know, it doesn't have anything in it, whereas tap water has um, calcium and, you know, kinds of things in it that can cause lime deposits in the boiler and uh, that can cause some damage to the boiler, can cause the end cap to separate, can cause a steam line to clog. So you want to run on distilled water. And, uh, you know, of course, also as well, we're on the subject of um, filling the engine. Of course, you know, you, I should have said earlier, you, you stick um, a funnel in there. Well, it's one way that you're pouring out of a glass or a, a smaller bottle, which I recommend. Have a little small bottle with uh, water in it and have it labeled. But, you know, syringe, pouring it out, I mean, a funnel, pouring it out, nah. So like I said, with the fuel and the barbecue section of the grocery store, you can also get these large syringes for like a dollar, maybe less, for injecting meat with marinade. And so where the needle would go, you go to the cleaning aisle, buy one of those 99 cent spray bottles and get the plastic tubing out of that. And then just put in the adapter. And then this just makes filling and emptying the boiler so much easier. I mean... These are just really nice to have. Uh, just it's less, no, no mess. And you always want to empty the boiler out after each use. And then you can see it's been, well, I just uh, emptied hot water out. So then just bent because it got hot. And um, also oil. And, you know, again, you're probably thinking, like, oh, you know, it's you throw away, you just lube everything. Yeah. But also, um, what you don't see here is steam oil, because uh, I'm out. But I will put a link to uh, another hobbyist uh, channel, Indiana Rog, and he has a great video on oiling and prepping your engines and talking about not only regular types of oil for lubricating the parts, but also steam oil for lubricating all the parts that come in contact with steam because it has special additives in it to where it doesn't wash away quite as easily. And a fun fact, that's how Valvoline oil was invented. Because um, the oil they had for steam locomotives and other engines back in the 1860s 
wasn't cutting it, so then oh, I forget his name said, hey, you can make special oil for that. And then, you know, you could just get a can of 3-in-1 or this plastic thing. Or, you know, it could be have a little adorable oil can. And, you know, it's just adorable. But then, you know, also some other things. And something that Indiana Rob doesn't cover in his video because he's using a... Um, and so, his engine is, um, I forget the exact model, but the engine's the same as on a Jensen 75 and 25, and, you know, again, with the link to his channel, you can see his, uh, the engine. So, but it's not an oscillating type engine. And so, something you want to do, um, so, again, you put regular 3-in-1, or, Regular tub more oil you know, here on a crankshaft on here. That's all you know, but again watch this video and then you want, want to put your steam oil in the cylinder and also up here against the plate so vibrate so it you know moves nice and then if you get your end this and you can get this bolt in a nice uh, sweet spot to where it's nice and um you know, it's nice and firm, but where you can also pull it off, and then you can lubricate the piston. So, um, I think this video is long enough, and, uh, oh, one more thing, they're also, like I said, uh, for accessories, generators, and stuff, and I'll, I'll put other types of, um, things for accessories and things down in the bucket below, so... And again, the link to Indian Rock's channel and also Mini Steam and Force Classics. So, um, I hope this information was helpful and, uh, happy steaming.